Divinity Original Sin is easily one of the greatest CRPGs of all time. It has great combat, interesting lore, and a ton of awesome stuff to do. Since it has won countless awards from a bunch of gaming sites, I decided to take a look into Larian's humble beginnings. In the ancient times of 202 AD, developer Larian Studios completed only their second game ever called Divine Divinity. It was heavily influenced by Diablo, but took elements from various other CRPGs at the time. While it wasn't as highly praised as Original Sin, is it worth venturing in? Eh, possibly. When you start a new game, you have a choice between three classes, survivor, warrior, and mage, and two genders, male and female. Unfortunately, you can't pick your starting stats or skills, you only have a choice of class with a predetermined skill set, and not even a choice to change the character model for said class. This is a bit of an omission here. So you wake up in some dude's basement. Eh, Kinda strange, and it's up to you to find out where the hell to go from here. As you explore the town, you'll come across some issues that need your solving. So that means it's time for a good old fashioned adventure. Just looking at the game, you'll get that Diablo vibe that the developers were aiming for with the isometric view and the various action RPG elements. Leveling up is very simple, as you gain enough experience, you can add points to your ability, strength, agility, stamina, and endurance. Plus, you can level up or learn a skill such as lockpicking, weapon mastery, lightning, summoning, sneaking, pickpocketing, and a few creative ones as well. As expected, your character is really crappy and can barely hold his or her own in the beginning, but will become a badass by the end. Early on, you'll find many weapons that you can't use at the moment, but it gives you a benchmark on what you need to improve, whether it'll be agility to use a scythe or strength to use a powerful battle axe. The dungeons themselves are everything you would expect from old school design, for better or for worse. While I do like maze-like level design, it's hard for you to find out where the hell you're supposed to go in this game. It doesn't help that everything looks the same, especially for earlier tombs. The combat is very simple with some special moves to use that either cost stamina or mana, very much like the aforementioned Diablo. However, the same flaw from Lionheart Legacy of the Crusader exists in this game. You can't see more than a few feet in front of you. The problem is your character's sight doesn't scale with the resolution, so you're often surrounded by enemies that you can't see and will fall into many stupid death traps. There isn't really a huge variation of enemies at first as you'll come across skeletons and orcs. Some use melee weapons and bows while others use magic. The enemies that use magic are obviously the most interesting, but I was overall disappointed with the enemy variety. Dungeons are not just about combat as there are puzzles that need to be solved. The environment is highly interactive which allows for puzzles to be solved in a variety of ways. Sometimes having an object on a switch will activate a door, while other times it will require you to flick a few switches or to search for all the all important key to move on or just place something on the ground to freaking go and progress. It gives you a sense of exploration and adventure rarely seen in games today. Progression is very linear early on, but once you cross that bridge, holy hell, the game really opens up as you can become someone who saves the world or would just rather see it burn. So many places to go, people to see, and definitely awesome loot to steal. What hooked me in and kept me playing is the awesome loot you can find. Anything you can think of. Swords, axes, daggers, bows, crossbows, staffs, sights, heavy armor, light armor, and a bunch more can be found with some really cool buffs attached. Plus the random loot generation keeps you playing just to see what else you'll come across next. Early on, it's easy to see how Divine Divinity had an influence on Original Sin. Certain characters like Counselor Jake, Esmeralda, Arhu, and a few others all originated from this title. The lore and mythos is well done, but what kept me interested in the world was the humor. Larian has always done a good job in mixing up both light and dark moments in one cohesive package. Some events are legit laugh out loud moments, and it's good to see Larian having fun with the project. While combat is a huge part of the game, the dialogue aspect also plays a major role as well. The people are great to talk to, and given the ability to trade with pretty much everyone is a great way to find some much needed potions and rare skills. There are some shifty folks out there though, so watch out who you want to do business with, or you'll end up with the guards chopping your head off. The voice acting is also highly comedic. I honestly can't tell if it was done accidentally or intentionally, but it's so bad it's hilarious. Great stuff. The sound effects are standard, but what really blew me away was the music. 
Holy hell, Larian is seriously underrated when it comes to conducting their music score. This is one of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time. I'm dead freaking serious. Overall, Divine Divinity is a great title. The graphics are similar to Diablo, so take it for what it is. The gameplay is also very much like Diablo, but it adds enough unique twists to make the game feel unique in its own right. The world of Divinity is great, and after playing this, I'm even more excited now for the upcoming Divinity Original Sin 2. The beginning is a bit rough in this game, a common theme with all Divinity games honestly, but it opens up vastly as you play along. Another common theme. If you're a fan of the Divinity series, I would highly recommend this title. If you're not, then I'll just give you a plain old recommendation. It's a great game, don't get me wrong, but with so many great RPGs out nowadays and with Original Sin having potential to be an all-time classic, it's easy to overlook this title. Regardless, you will have an enjoyable time with this title even if the beginning is like grinding your teeth on a cheese grater. Thanks for watching as always, and this is Powerhouse, signing off.